This book here is this little notebook here on top is Tomoe River Paper. I believe that's how it's pronounced. And uh, it's pretty much a legend in the fountain pen world in terms of what it can do. But I decided I just got this new shipment from um, Goulet Pens. So I decided to try and push this thing to the max and see what would really happen if we could give this to Maui River Paper some major exercise. So I'll show you the outside of the package. I love green, so of course I had to get it in green. Um, I think it's the A4 size green. Uh, don't quote me on that because I don't know those A sizes because um, it's a European thing and I'm not from Europe, so I'm not that familiar with them. Um, anyway, uh, I should probably learn though. Because that's how you get good paper. Um, this ink came with this uh, pad. I got the ink too. And this is Diamine Purple Pizzazz. It's a, a shimmering fountain pen ink. So I decided that I love the way the shimmering inks look when they pool. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to use... A little bit of this ink drop it onto here and see what happens so I'm gonna... it's a pretty label I like it all right I forgot something that I've learned about these shimmertastic inks is that you want to really shake the bottle first because although theoretically they're supposed to be in suspension, they usually aren't. So I'm going to give the bottle a nice shake so I can evenly distribute that shimmery stuff around the ink. You know, I could be wrong. It could be all right too, but. This is, um, uh, this kind of syringe is used for epoxy glue, and I have this stuff from my sailboat. Um, but I like to use it for this, too. The tip got a little bent, but we'll just... So I put some ink in this syringe so we can use it for this little demonstration. And we're going to totally saturate this paper with ink and water and see what happens. I put some paper under it, so if it fails, I won't destroy the whole pad, but I thought it would be a nice test. This is a, a water brush, and um, it's the largest one I could find. Why the heck won't that cap come off? All right. Ah, the wrong part keeps unscrewing. These people need to, there we go. Okay, so here's my water brush. Now, let's try. First thing I'm gonna do is kind of take this ink syringe and go around the paper like so. Maybe a puddle over here. And you know, let's see what happens with that. It's gotta have some shimmer in it, right? push that around with the water brush a little bit. Now this should really be testing this Tomoe River paper. I mean, if it's not completely misshapen by the time we're done, I'll be amazed. So this is what you call a watercolor wash. In other words, there's no, there's no dry parts on the paper. I'm also dying to see that shimmer-tastic effect, so I'm going to really leave some of these areas heavier than others in the hopes that we get a nice shine on there. As you can see here, the ink bled through. Um, it didn't bleed through too badly, considering that was a heavy wash. And, like, I thought about it afterwards, and I'm like, maybe I kind of made the wash too heavy. So, this time we're going to try 
and see if we can do a light wash and avoid that bleed through. I think there will still be ghosting, but um, I'm still really, really impressed with the Tomoe River paper. Here goes the light wash. Whoa, so much for that being light. Let's get some of that back. Okay. Wah! Crap. On this page, we're going to do an ink test. And we're going to test all six of the fountain pens I have currently inked, plus a brush pen, and see how the Tomoe River paper does with that. I always keep a piece of paper under my paper. And I do that so that um, when you're looking at it, and when you're writing on it, it won't absorb into the next sheet. It helps just kind of keep the rest of the pad fresh. So uh, we're going to do that. And this portion of the video is going to be speeded up.
This poor little notebook, it's gone through a lot. So what have we learned today about this? We have learned that Tomoe River paper is indeed magical. Here is that first page where I did the heavy wash. Let's hold that right up to the camera, change the angles a little bit so we can see the sheen on that. Look at the gorgeousness there. That's okay. This paper is only 52 GSM, whatever that means. I think it's grams per something, meter or something like that. But anyway, so this is the paper where we did the heavy wash. It's half as thin as copy paper. We're going to flip it over. We see the other side. The other side did have some bleed through. Um, this doesn't count because this is from the Tomoe River disaster that happened later in the video. Um, but this is where... I shot a ton of ink all over the place and dumped it on the piece of paper, actually half accidentally. And really, there was absolutely no bleed through. This is stuff that soaked through because it was on the edge. It wasn't bleed through. Amazing. All right. So this is the six pens I have currently inked. It's a Goulet notebook, 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. And it's a six by eight and a half A5. So the first pen I have inked is a Twisby 580 Extra Fine. The second pen I have inked is a Welsh Permapoint. And the third, a Pilot Prera. The fourth, a Waterman, or a Waterman 52 Flex Nib. The fifth is an Eclipse. And the sixth is a Ready Point. So I have these six pens that I use on this. And as you can see, they run the gamut. Some of them are some of them are bold and some of them are really delicate, but I also used a brush pen or a brush yeah, like a like a um a brush pen for that. And look at the back of this paper. There's like nothing except a tiny bit of ghosting from this broad nib flex ready point um, with Iroshizuku Fuyugaki in it. And that is it, folks. So we have now learned that you can throw just about anything at Tomoe River paper and it will survive. And that um, it's pretty amazing, darn near magical stuff just like they said.